animals. We have $40 from Limpet. First SGDQ watching live. First time donating. First time waking up at 4 a.m. to watch someone else play a video game. Good luck, runners. $50 from Chris185. It's the perfect time for Kingdom Hearts speed runs in Australia. They're always the best. We have $10 from Matrix Aaron. So is this when we finally get to see the super hyped Ventus run? Seriously though, it's been a great SGDQ so far, and I'm enjoying every minute. Shoutouts to the Epic Couch Pre-Game Entertainment. This donation goes to Demon and Chaco for ch Chrono Trigger names. We have $150 from Ars Arc. Finally decided to donate to this wonderful cause after checking my bank account and seeing the Roxas figure. Let Spike Vegeta put this money towards whatever he wants. $20 from Siroxus. Kingdom Hearts Hype! My favorite series of all time, with Birth by Sleep being my absolute favorite game. So yeah, this felt like the right time to donate a bundle of cash money to this great cause. Keep doing what you do. $30 from Anonymous. My first Birth by Sleep speedrun I've watched. I've been waiting as the couch of GDQ is great at describing how runs work. Good luck guys, it's great to see how the video game community work to better the world. Much love from Australia. Charizard the Bulbasaur is the best Bulbasaur. $100 from Dean116. For Kingdom Hearts and all the amazing Kingdom Hearts runners. Good luck Adam. We have $50 from Sora, Larry Fife. Kingdom Hearts is my favorite game series. Am I the only one who loves Zeha Nord's story? Is the runner looking to forward to Kingdom Hearts 3? And is when the new saga of Kingdom Hearts, since they announced the Zeha Nord's saga, won't be the end of the series? Can I get a darkness is the heart's true essence? We have $20 from Jacob Rice. Walt Disney once said, it's kind of fun to do the impossible. That's what you guys do at every GDQ. Keep up the incredible work. We have $15 from Eevee. Love SGDQ, love Kingdom Hearts, love speedrunning, love all of you. Hello from Germany and good luck for the runs. $50 from Anonymous. We have $25 from Anonymous. Love the Kingdom Hearts genre and love the event, guys. Great games for a great cause. Much love from Australia. We have $50 from Dark Drake. Aloha, everyone. Very good marathon as usual. Been watching this since CGDQ and it manages to be more entertaining every year. Keep up the awesome work. Greetings from Germany. Turn me down. <laughs> oh no, yeah, I, I get it. Is this a little bit better? I can't hear myself, which is perfect. 
So if I could hear Mufin and Mufin can hear, like, this okay. is weird. Uh, yeah, this is super weird. Yeah, it looks like my mic's the only one that's picking up. Oh, what? Um, I can't oh, hear. Um, no, 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 no. I want no. this. Is it for a couch, man? Yeah, yeah I want my. Yeah. I want my room. No, no, sorry, man. First row, though. Um, I can't hear him, and I think he can't hear anybody but himself. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's just okay. Now I can hear myself. Oh, I can hear okay. moving. Hey, something. All right, I hey, think. Hey, man. How you doing? I can hear everybody. Everything sounds good then. Yeah, it was just a little weird. All right, just give me a heads up, and we are good to go. We're good okay. to go. All right, guys. Nice. Um. I uh, just want to give a big warning out to the stream before we start. There are a bunch of points where there's going to be fr like flashing black and white lights. Just to give you a heads up, especially at the end of bosses. So uh, if you're not into that, just, just I guess look away from the screen. Like do a Tyler or something. Anyway, uh, we're good. We're good. Uh, this is Gargoyles Quest for the Game Boy. Playing on Game Boy Player in 3, 2, 1, go. And we have a 20 minute cut, 20 second cutscene. Yeah, okay. Uh, I play in English. Uh, but I have the world record for this game. It's in Japanese, but I play in English just so, you know, the audience and everything can understand what's going on in this deep and intricate plot where your play is Firebrand. Uh, if you don't know, this guy is one of the most notable enemies in all of Capcom games. He is mean. Um, first level is fairly simple. Uh, there's two things. The bottom, the left, is the wing power. I'm at right, bomb right is wing power, bomb left is life. I can only take two hits before dying. So, uh, you know, kind of like uh, other games in the Ghosts and Goblins series. Uh, this, I mean, you can hover, he can't fly vertically. So you have to watch out on your hovers, uh, time those right. Uh, if you do it right, you can get here in one less hover than what you usually take, so that's good. Um, one of the most notable things in this game is that, yeah, you just die really quickly. A lot of things will do two damage to you and kill you, like instantly. Uh, this is a damage boost right here. That's good. Nice. Uh, just got through that. That's, yeah, just jumping between those two ghouls. Those are ghouls. Those are not members of any uh, organization or anything. Those are just undead enemies that you want to kill. Uh, these are flames. You avoid them. And we're coming up to our first boss already. Uh, it's a fish. It's like Magikarp or something. That and was it's fast. Dead. Yeah. That was good. Good, good. good kill. And I got it on the good frame, so that's great. He's a happy little red armor right there. Well done. And, um, oh, and by the way, there's RPG elements, kind of. You have an overworld with uh, random encounters, so if you get good luck, then... You avoid them, and yeah, um, on average I get a lot per game. Uh, that's one. I'd like someone keeping track if that'd be possible. Um, also, one thing notice in all these encounters, the counter doesn't end until all the enemy projectiles are off screen. Also, my beginning shot, I can only fire one at a time, and those two take four hits to kill. Their pellets do two damage, but their body only does one, so you just want to ram into the first one. Uh, the, there's different encounters depending on what area you're in. Uh, these are all fairly easy. There's one encounter that's a real pain in the butt in the area. Later on, you can actually encounter that first boss in an encounter. It's incredibly rare. I've only had it twice ever, and if I do get it, I'll be very sad because I can't remember the best strategy for that because I didn't bother practicing for that one. Um, there's also force encounters across the overworld. When you first play this game, it's really annoying, uh, these encounters, because you don't know where to go, so you're just wandering around getting random encounters everywhere. And it's even worse for speedrunning because each encounter can take 15 to about 22 seconds depending on which encounter you get. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> you can lose a lot of time easily. The English, best time on English version by Zer91 is quite amazing because I believe you only had three encounters the entire game. Uh, this is one of the worst encounters to get early on because you don't have high jumps so you have to take the long way around to kill those. You see a lot of these enemies later on in levels. Um, Overworld is just uh, not a whole lot of fun to try to speed run through. <laughs> um, the one nice thing, though, about all the other levels, there's zero luck. It should be all execution based. Here's Jark. He looks very familiar to maybe the boss of Ghosts and Goblins, Ghosts and Ghosts. Uh, it's somewhat similar, you know. Um, translation is not great at points on this. 
Uh, this one's one of the better ones, but later on, some of the times you have to answer yes or no are, uh, they don't quite make sense. Uh, I don't know if it was just uh, just translation, straight translation or what. Also in Japanese, the text is a lot faster, but the, like I said, I want to show everyone the you know story in English so the you guys can experience. understand. Yeah. So I picked up the fingernail of the specter that allows me to jump higher. That's a nice, that's a little tougher than it looks right there. Just to fall down straight without touching the wall. I mean, these platforms fall sometimes. It just eats your inputs very rarely. I've had it where I've landed, jumped, and not done anything. Also, I'm playing on the Game Boy Player, which is why it has this color palette instead of the, uh, well, greens and grays or of the uh, original Game Boy. I'm picking up a safety life. Thanks, Encounter. I'm going to pick up a safety life here in just a little bit. Uh, that's just for the next level, which is uh, not very nice in the speed run. Most of the time, for the bosses, in order to do them fast, you can't take any damage whatsoever throughout the levels. Uh, there's no health pickups in the second level, so if I take damage, I have to take the slow strat. Or I could kill my, uh, kill my character in here and uh, respawn. Again, these, this is like one of the worst encounters early on to get. Just because you have to wait for that pelt to exit the screen, and it just moves so slowly. Because I can't damage through it, or else it would instant kill me. Uh, yeah, that's the second level over there, that nice two tower face in the top right there. Um, just so you know, like I said, this is a spin-off of the Ghosts and Goblins series, where you, yeah, you play as the red armor of uh, killing everybody fame. Uh, yeah, this level, uh, those are spores. If you touch them, they'll fire in three directions, so I'd never want to hit one at all. Uh, this jump coming up here is one of the hardest in the game, and I got it. Just jumping over that fly is a pain. Uh, this is also another hard jump. Uh, one thing about this is that depending on which direction you press while you jump off a wall, you can get you can climb slightly faster or slightly slower in the air. So I want to use that as much as possible. That is manipulation of these moving platforms. I move to the right of the screen to move those uh, around so they come back at me faster. Uh, I can do the same here if I get it right. I, no, I didn't. That one can start moving to the left a little bit just so you can land on that without having to stop for a whole like tenth of a second. It's not too bad. All right, that's a um, tight jump. All right, got those jumps. Those are kind of scary. Uh, those things spit if you give them too much time on screen, so I don't. Again, scrolling it over to the left. And here we are. And this is the boss, the eye tower. I'm going to ask for quietness or whatever. Just because I need to hear. Yeah. That, was, that was so sick. Okay. <laughs> That looks like I just ran up to their faces and spammed to their eyes, which is true. But those are on a very set pattern where also you can just hover right there if you, uh, <laughs> I went where it ends. So what happens right there, I'll explain a little bit now. That, uh, that boss fight is uh, pretty darn tough. I mean, it looks incredibly easy, but those are supposed to fire shots at you the entire time. I believe it goes on a timer for when you start and how long they're on screen. Um, you have to walk back right here, but uh, well, I can explain why I walk back. So what you have to do is you have to go in the right order so and have them appear just for the right amount of time so you kill them before they shoot. Like if I wasted probably even like a quarter second, they would have shot me right in the face and I would have died. So I'm very happy that I got through the tower damageless. Uh, that's why you need, like I said, you need to go through a damage list just so you can boost off that um, spike to kill that top right boss. Uh, uh, I can use donations right now. I'm just going to do some more talking, just a little backtracking for right now. All right, we have a donation from Evathical. Oh, Yo. our boy yep. Evathical. Donating while my boy Cook is running Gargoyles <laughs> Quest. Show the viewers how a good run is done, unlike my ESA run. And get that bridge <laughs> skip first try. Oh, Let Cook <laughs> decide where to put this money. Put it towards me, Beam Machine, man. <laughs> I got to support anything with Long John Baldry in it. You're going to get it first try, though. Yeah, um, bridge skip, uh, I don't know if I should go for it. Just to explain what bridge skip is, it's 14 two-frame windows inputs in a row without messing up. 
and if you mess up, you lose two minutes. So, uh, I don't know. Should I go for it? Yeah, of course. Oh, definitely. Oh, okay. That's, uh, uh, it's very, uh, um, I'd say I get it maybe about, well, I've only had three runs where I've actually gotten this skin. <laughs> uh, I want to make it four. Uh, okay, that means I'm just going to have to take a safety save somewhere else. Uh, we, we also have $30 from Rogue Link. Hey, Unusual Cook, Rogue Link here. I just started speedrunning Gargoyle's Post, oh. and it is a ton of fun. Hope to see more people running this game. Good luck on the run, and go for the bridge skip. Oh, <laughs> man. Okay, that's yeah. two Gargoyle's quest runners going for it. I actually took a little misstep right there. I just need to backtrack, like, one step backwards. Um, also, I got new power-up, the Blockbuster. Um, it does what it says it does. And on top of that, it you can fire two shots at once, which is really nice for these encounters coming up. There's one scary encounter that I can get that couldn't really screw me over because you can't attack this enemy from the front and it takes four shots from the back and it likes to just turn around whenever it feels like. Right here, um, I got an armor that increases my life to three. Also, he asked me if I wanted to go. It's like walking in death's door and I said yes. So, no, he asked me, I, he said I shouldn't go. It's like walking to death's door and I replied with yes. So that's a little mistranslation, I believe. Uh, this is just a transition level, like the bridge. They're very short, just moving from one area of the overworld to another. Uh, all the Gargoyles Quest series, you know, Gargoyles Quest 1, 2, and uh, Demon's Crest all have overworld type of things, but this is, I believe, the only one with random encounters. You see that double hit so much faster. Yeah. Like, that went so much faster than previous encounters there. Also, you can get encounters as soon as you beat a level, as soon as you exit from a doorway. You can get encounters all over the place in this game. This is another safety life. Uh, I guess I'm going for the bridge skip. <laughs> you got this. You got something all right. simple. Yeah, I got $70. Was that $70 sent to me for the bridge skip? I mean, all right, this is a safety save for if when I probably game over that uh, I can re be revived right here. And if for some reason it doesn't work, I do have a list of passwords around here somewhere. <laughs> um, so this bridge skip, sorry, it's a lot of, uh, well, I don't want to call it hype, but a lot of commotion surrounding this <laughs> skip. <laughs> Up there t behind that ghoul is the item that gives you increased wing power, which makes the br going over the bridge incredibly easy. Uh, good frame. Yeah, it's a good frame, like <laughs> bending frames when you take damage are always beautiful. You can also have it while you're invisible. But anyway, that wing... Uh, really makes it a lot easier to go over this bridge section. So without it, uh, like I said, you have to enter 14 two-frame windows in a row. That gives you uh, perfect flutters. And so that makes you able to cross this long gap of nothing. You'll see up ahead. But why I do this, um, do, like the bridge skip prevents, uh, it saves dialogue. And at this point right here, you usually have a fight, but he says this, like, he calls my wings weak and lets me go ahead anyway. Just laughs at you. So, uh, yeah, let's see if I can get this. But you got it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have three more tries on this. Uh, yeah, like it's quite a rhythm to get. Ah, uh, <laughs> it's quite a rhythm to get Come into. On, you got this. Ah. Uh, Come on, armor. Red firebrand. Ah, that was bad. That was bad. All right, last try, guys. I don't think I'll get this, but... Oh. Mm. All right, that's... All right, so I respawn right there. I pick up the wings and I walk back. So the walk of shame, I can take some more donations right now while I walk back. All right, we have 125 from Willow10. AGDQ and the SGDQ are amazing events. Thank you very much for these events. We have 50 from Zonatex. Nice work. Keep going. By the way, save the animals. We have $20 from Why So Serious. Greetings from Australia. So glad I finally got to catch the stream live. Even happier, I got to watch Kingdom Hearts live. Looking forward to seeing Chrono Trigger 100% run. Let's make it happen. And help Doctors Without Borders while we do. Good luck and have fun. Uh, all right, so... Uh, how the heck did I not get an encounter that entire walk? So that, okay, I lost not nearly as much time as I thought I would right there. Oh, okay, geez, this is one of the scariest fights in the game, so. I'll explain about it after the fight. 
Uh oh. Uh oh. Just die. All right. So about that fight right there, both those enemies take 10 hits. Um, hit it, getting hit by their head does two damage to you. Getting hit by their body does three damage, so it's an instant kill. So at that point, you have to avoid them. I damage boost off. Uh, I take damage off the spikes, so I don't have to deal with that. And then you just spam them. Their heads block shots, which is more annoying. But yeah, um, this is just crossing the gap. You can see how much easier it is with my wing power like more than doubled. So that is just makes it a lot easier. Just hovering over the lava right there for fun. Anyway, we are moving on to the third area. This one, I don't want to take any damage until the second half of the level. Uh, a lot of these NPCs in this game you just see wandering around. They're not, like, any NPCs in towns aren't dangerous, usually. Uh, they just kind of give you hints. They tell you where the wing is. Uh, like, you know, someone in the game tells you where the wing is. Also, in the Game Boy player, you can see the traps on the ground in this level. Usually you can't. I mean, I would know where they are anyway, I mean, because I've played this game a bunch, but it helps the viewer at home see why I would be... It, like, yeah, if I was playing on, like, black and white, you wouldn't wouldn't realize why I'm just like trying to jump around and like not walk on the ground normally. Those toads are a pain in the butt. Um, I'll see them later on. They do two damage to you when you touch them. Uh, mostly they're not bad, but I'm gonna slow down like later on in the game to avoid them. This is the top half of the level. I'm glad I didn't take any damage on the bottom because on the top there is an enemy coming up which does two damage to you. So you just want to uh, let him ram into you and kill him. It's faster than trying to dodge him much faster because he likes to slow down the game. There's a lot of slowdown in this game if you can't tell. So you want to uh, try to mitigate that by killing on-screen enemies. You'll see that more in some later levels that I try to kill some. Uh, some it's just faster to avoid than try to go out your way and kill. This is a boss coming up. Um, and that's the boss. That was very good. So you just jump. Yeah. <laughs> So before the boss fights, starts fight, you just jump to the opposite side of him and uh, just hit B a little bit to kill him. It's the easiest fight in the game. If you don't kill him in time, you just he just splits up into multiple pieces. This is also a lot of talking, so just uh, donations would be good here. All right, we have ten dollars from Sparen. Hi, ever since I saw Kingdom Hearts 2 speedrun at AGDQ 2015, I've been hooked on speedrunning. Kingdom Hearts series mean a great deal to me, so seeing it here just makes me all the more happy. Keep the great work and save the frames. Kill the animals. <laughs> you have 50 from Noct. Kingdom Hearts, take my money. Why hasn't Square Enix released the HD mix mixes on PS4 already? Keep up the good work and here's towards setting some world records. Cooperative. Um, just real quick, those those on the side are vials. There's they look the same. They can either contain lives or vials. Vials, which you saw like get after encounters, those are used to buy lives. They get more and more expensive as time goes on. And it's just not it's not viable in a speedrun to get extra lives. And usually you wouldn't, you know, in a perfect speedrun you wouldn't die at all. Also, something real quick to say that uh, <laughs> dying is actually faster if you get an encounter than to actually uh, do the encounter. But I'd rather have my lives for safety at this point. It's slightly faster because you don't have the victory fanfare or anything. I'm just skipping through these towns. Like, they talk to you, they say hi to you, just, I don't care about them. Uh, this is a desert. It has a specific walking pattern to get to the boss. I meant to the boss, to the, you know, desert um, level. It's really easy um, to figure out. This is a falling section right here. It's a little tricky, but not bad. It's tricky. It's like this is more like a maze when you first play, trying to figure out exactly where to go. And this is yeah, water. Like you saw this before. I mean, it's a little awkward in water. And for some reason, the, like the bottom part, even though it looks like water, it behaves like air. So you just fall into the spikes if you're close. Those fish charge at you if you're on the same level as them. That skull plant just fires. If you about plants, this is one of the <laughs> well most frustrating parts of the game, especially casually. That plant actually has more tendrils on it at the end. It just doesn't show. And that plant has a ton of health. It takes a long time to kill, and it chases you, so you just want to avoid it. And you want to avoid, this is another one of the levels where you don't want to take any damage throughout the entire level. You kill that guy right before he hits you. Just avoid that ghost. And you're coming up to my favorite boss's name, the Zakudruzer.
Uh, nice. Oh, I killed oh. a blind. Ooh. Uh, I, all right, that's an enemy where you really need to mash. All right. <laughs> You're close. I killed a, I think he was dying as I uh, finished him. You, yeah, you just stand in him and mash. So I'll try one more time with that. I guess I could always take the safe route, but it is much slower, and I had a life to spare. I'd have three more lives to spare if I went on the brace skip. That's fine taking that damage here as long as I don't take more damage. If I do, I'm going to have to take the uh, slow route. Round. Just don't touch that plant. Yeah, this spot right here, like trying to hover, like... Ooh. Recovered. Like, trying to hover like and just barely fall is a pain in the butt. So let's see if I can kill the Zakadruzer again. This time, hopefully, I don't die in the process. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, like all the bosses have tons of flashing lights when I uh, when they die. There, there we go. We go. That's a lot of mashing right there. I've ended every frame with him smiling, like every boss, <laughs> so this is a good run so far. If uh, the red armor is happy, I'm happy. He's smiling on you. <laughs> and so now I have the best power-up in the game, the power of Claw. Uh, this works like the blockbuster. You can fire two shots at the same time, except for these two shots do a lot of damage. Also, oh man, this is not good. This encounter is garbage, and I don't have any extra life, so I'm going to have to take this very, very carefully. Oh, they both turn around. Like, you know, I say, like, the turn around on you. I'm not lying. Jerks. Like, they just decide to turn around on me. <laughs> like, usually, if you have four lives, this is an incredibly easy encounter for health. I mean, I'm just taking my sweet time because I do not want to game over right here. Because game overing this game sends you back very, very far. Like, you saw it sent me back about two minutes when I missed the bridge skip, and that's probably one of the shorter spots in the game. So, again, casually, you game over, you get sent back really far. <laughs> uh, so this makes it a, one of the tougher, a tougher game to beat casually. It's this game's amazing. Though. One of the best on the game, but I put it right up there with like Donkey Kong '94 as a amazing game. Oh yeah, this guy is like the NPC that wants to fight you. And better luck next time, little guy. <laughs> Again, smiling. I'm getting these nice frames at the end. He does give you an extra health though, but I didn't want to do that before the. Uh, Desert because it'd be slower. I'd have to go through all this dialogue, then walk back out of town, then walk to the desert. Got the four. Yep. So now I have four lives, which is for health, I mean, which is just so much safer for all these overworld encounters. Uh, this guy has a secret passage behind his um, throne area. You can't walk through it beforehand, or else I would just have done that earlier. So now I can access the secret passage. And um, coming up, it's going to be a lot of, a decent amount of dialogue. The longest, I think, single stretch of dialogue in the game. So it'd be another point to read a few more donations in just like a minute. Uh, yeah, the overall enemies vary depending on which location they're in. I'm no longer getting the um, swamp creatures or the standard ghouls. I'm getting like chariots or these guys again. Like I said, this was a scariest encounter with the other, a very scary encounter with the other ones with uh, the claw. You just hold right and fire, and you kill him. Uh, I could, yeah, I could use the donations. It's going to be a little bit of like standard level ahead, like nothing, nothing exciting to about this one. Nothing, um, you know, quite noteworthy. All just, right. Um, we have fifty dollars from Tribor. The Gargoyle series games are some of my favorites, and even though they're a little rough around the edges. Here are 50 vials to help you stock up on extra lives. Put this money towards runner's choice. Mean bean machine, man. Also, if you only fall down this little bit, oh, that usually doesn't respond, but I guess it respond right there. Doesn't matter, I have four health. Yeah, and here's the longest dialogue of the game. So you could, this pretty much gives all the exposition in the entire game. So uh, it's about a minute or so, so you can, maybe 30 seconds, so feel free to uh, give another donation or two. All right, we have $375 from Ted. Ooh. Good morning to everyone awake. Here's my donation to Maj Vulajins from his Ori in the Blind Forest run late in the evening last night. Awesome to continue to see great runs in the event and looking forward to the rest of the runs. Thanks, Spike, for being great on the mic last night for Ori. And thanks for awesome games this morning to see from the donation desk. 
P.S. This is going to the naming incentive for Magus to get started on the Demon Chaco name for Chrono Trigger. Yep, and so this dialogue pretty much saying that you are the same blood as the previous Red Blaze, which sealed away the King of Destruction. So, yeah, they want to, now the school wants to stop you. And you know I said before about the encounter being very, very scary? Well, now they have the Power Claw and Four Life. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> so what happens in that, like, because the chariots do two damage to you of direct damage. I can take one damage off the spikes, kill that guy, and then take the two direct damage and kill the other one from behind. And it only takes two shots this time with the claw. So this is just reaffirming that, yes, uh, my character is Firebrand. I can go, you know, save this kingdom. And I have to go to Rushafell and uh, face him to prove that I am the true, uh, I guess, gargoyle. This is another bridge segment. Uh, there's not much to talk about this one. It's a standard uh, level. Most of these bridges aren't too dangerous. There's one later on that you can die on a little more easy, easily. The only bridge that's really dangerous is if you try to go for the skip. I'll just pause here so I don't take more damage. Oh yeah, I just got above the flare. Yeah, that's so close. Your feet hitboxes is a little off compared to where your character actually is. Yeah, so um, this is the end of that one. And this is probably, in casual gameplay, this is by far the worst area coming up. Well, after this encounter. <laughs> How many encounters is has anyone keeping? Tra has anyone been keeping track? Like 15 plus. Yeah, like my best time on uh, Japanese is a 2704, and I had seven encounters. Which, incidentally, the world record for Gargoyles Quest 2 was also 2704. So they have the same exact time. <laughs> so I think it's pretty funny. But um, you can just see how much time each encounter takes. So running this game is a pain in the <laughs> pain in the rear end once in a while. <laughs> Uh, okay, this is scary. Is it the fish or is it the plant? Oh, it's a plant. The fish and the plant have the exact same setup right there. Speaking about plants, uh, this area has plants that follow you through a maze. Um, and casually, only one of those mouths, there's like 10 or so mouths in this area, only one of them actually takes you to where you need to go. So that's a whole lot of fun. And yeah, those plants, I want to, like, this is imperative that I go through this very fast because those follow you and they really slow down the game. Good climb. That was nice. Like, good climb, no problems whatsoever there. And we meet Rushafell here and he'll want us to go through another level to beat this game. Well, to prove that you are the true gargoyle. Uh, this level coming up, there's the first one where I use a good amount of damage boosts in, I used one in the first level. This one, you really want to take damage boosts or else you're going to be going pretty slow. But that also makes the fight dangerous. Uh, I'll explain more about that a little later. This is another one, like, um, fluttering is really important in this game, just falling just for a little bit, just so you don't use up all your wing power. If you flew straight right there, you'd be screwed. Alright, I'm letting that frog. Yeah, I said earlier, that frog has ruined so many runs by jumping up and just nicking me. It does two damage. Uh, I'm going to pause here and take more. That's good, because taking damage at that point, uh, you can't fall all the way through if you don't hit the, uh, two, the other big spike poking out. Also, this area has a ton of slowdown. And right here, if I stay right here, uh, that other spike doesn't go through in time so I can fall. I got the hover right here, and... I kill those enemies to reduce the uh, slowdown. I can take another hit here and I'll be fine, but you know, it's always nice just barely avoiding those uh, shots. Those only do one, so I'm good. I just need another health here just so I can survive. This is that's an intentional one, just so I can go through that. This, uh, those drills do two damage to you, and they're incredibly hard to avoid. Also, this is the most slowed down in the entire game. It just, Frames. yeah, you can just get to see his amazing walk cycle right there. It's truly something to behold. There's a super quick kill on this guy. I have no lives, so I'm just going to go for the just regular quick kill, which is a li little bit slower and a lot less dangerous. It's still kind of dangerous. I mean, Yvatical in his run at ESA, he got some game overs here. And got it. Nice. 
<laughs> Another happy gargoyle. He's like, so right there, that's a homing shot that follows you throughout the entire level. I mean, throughout the area that you're fighting, and it's kind of, it goes kind of slow, but it's a pain to avoid. But if you are above where he um, shoots it, um, like if it's off screen, when he shoots it, it just disappears. So you do that, he puts his like, arms down long enough for you to spam into his face and kill him. The bosses all follow a similar pattern where you just spam into their face uh, while taking damage most of the time. But again, it's a little bit harder than it looks. I hope I'm making this game look easy, even with my game over. <laughs> uh, speaking about game over, I'm gonna go for a trick right here. I'll probably game over, but if I don't, then that'll be nice. But if I do game over, I actually respawn right here. So I lose all of maybe like five or six seconds. So it's, it's worth it, I think, for what I'm trying to do. So is that it? Nope. There we go. Yeah, there yeah, you yeah. are. <laughs> nice. So this is the first part. We, up, we have a fully upgraded wing power so we can fly across the stage. And there's a small, very small gap where you can fly under this stage. You can actually fly under every single stage in the game. But since you have infinite wing power, this is the only one where you can actually do it. You cannot recover from this. You cannot go any higher. But thankfully, the entire right plane of the level is the trigger to go across the bridge. So I'm good. Also, I forgot before in a run. Switch back over to Claw. The Black Breaker is the only one who could damage that previous boss. So if you're wondering why I did a weaker attack, that's why. There's a few damage boosts you can do in here. But I'm only going to go for one because I'm going to play it really safe because I'm a little baby, I guess. Uh, well, kind of safe. I mean, this level, yeah, that saves going over the lava, like falling down, having to walk around. Um, lava does two damage, spikes only do one, so that's good to just damage boost off spikes. And um, yeah, I could damage boost off that one, but like I said, playing it safe just because I have no lives and I don't want to game over and have to go through this one again. Uh, this one is a lot of menuing, just switching back and forth between the two attacks. Like, another one, you can damage boost off this and jump, but that's kind of hard. This is also, like, a skip. All right, that's a little one. And for some reason, this flies stack on top of each other right there. And I didn't take damage off that climb. That's good. And here's another switch right here. This game makes you switch a lot uh, on this level, which is weird, because it's pretty much the only level where you really need to switch a good amount. Let's see if I can get this. Oh. All right, I'll take the slow way around. Yeah. You can, yeah, get off that jump and do fine. Now I have to be a little careful because I can, I only have, uh, <laughs> I can only get hit by the, I can't get hit by the lava anymore. And if I, like I said, if I die, game over and I go all the way back, so that sucks. Losing a decent amount of time here. All right, that's good. Yeah, and like a lot of parts casually, you can easily trap yourself on like a corner and there's spikes above you and you cannot jump away on time. And I got that. That's a nice that little like jump. Nice. And then you bait that guy around, switch to the dark fire that you just got, and now it's time for the final boss. If I game over, I just spawn right back here. Uh, this boss is the reason why you always want to press B while going through a menu instead of A. Because he asks you, well, you can read it right here, but he says, why don't you join me? If you say yes and join him, you lose all your power-ups, all your health, and you die, pretty much. You, you still have to fight him, so he just kills you on screen. So you say no. Um, this boss, if I don't get the quick kill, it's much faster for me just to um, kill my character and go back to the menu right there. It's a little boring right here. Just wait for him. And got it. Cool. Then this is the final boss of the game right here. So uh, time's coming up in a little bit. I have the timer right here. So this was Gargoyle's Quest, another great uh, Capcom game. It's nice having Capcom sponsor us, and I hope they can continue to make great games in the future. Hopefully, maybe bring back the armor once in a while, other than uh, Marvel versus Capcom. Give him his own game again. Uh, so this is yeah, the final little thing. Um, it's pretty much saying, great job. The other ones around you, like they all say great job too. So, you know, it's just a nice little congratulations at the end. And he says, hey, why don't you just try to take over the human world? So again, guys, thanks for watching. You guys have been awesome. It's been a great time. That's time. 
And what was it? Oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it was like, thir- oh my gosh. That would have been, if I didn't do the bridge, that would have been a 31, which is crazy on English. <laughs> well, cool. I agree well, underestimate. Good job, dude. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, real, just real, real quick, <laughs> shout-outs um, again to everyone on speedrun.com that does Gargoyles Quest. Uh, that's Zer91, Sparcy, um, John X Spiderweb, Yvatical, uh, Rogue Link, me, of course. I can't, well, hopefully I didn't miss anyone there. Just shout-outs to you guys. It's going to be great. I'm going to try taking down Gargoyles Quest 2 after SGDQ, so watch out, Spiderweb. <laughs> and this is the end. Thanks for watching, guys. You guys have been awesome. And up next is uh, more Game Boy. More Game Boy goodness.